In this video, we're going to look at factoring quadratic expressions when the coefficient of a term in x squared is not 1. The method that I'm going to use is not mathematically rigorous. So, if you've learned a more formal technique, please continue to use that. I've designed the video to allow students who are not comfortable with those formal techniques an opportunity to factor. Let's look at a quadratic expression, and we can write these in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So a nice straightforward example might be x squared minus 2x minus 8. If we were asked to factor this, we would have now double brackets. We would put 1x in the front of each bracket. We would then look for two numbers that multiply to give the c term and add to give the b term. So we've got two numbers that multiply to give minus 8 and add to give minus 2. We might spot those straight off as minus 4 and plus 2. If we weren't able to spot them, we can just consider 8. We'd have 1 times by 8 and 2 times by 4. They're all the factors of 8. We need now a difference of 2, so it's going to be this one right here. If we've got a negative on the end, 1 will be positive, 1 will be negative. So this is a nice straightforward example of factoring now a quadratic expression when the coefficient of a term in x squared is 1. What we're going to do in this video is look when a is not 1. So, in this question, it says factorise, and then we've got a range to. So the coefficient of a term in x squared is 2, in r squared is 3, in x squared is 4, in p squared is 6, in s squared is 9. So these are not 1. What I'm going to do now is set up the double brackets. I'm going to now, instead of putting 1x in like I did before, I'm going to initially put 2x in. And the first thing you say to yourself is, well, when I expand this out, I'm going to get 4x squared. What we're going to look at is the trick now to write this in its simplest form. What we do here now is multiply the a term by the c term. So if I do 2 times by 1, that gives me 2. I now look for the two numbers, but multiply to give 2 and add to give 3. We don't have an awful lot of choice. That's simply going to be plus 2 and plus 1. So in each bracket, I put plus 2 and plus 1. At this stage, we look for common factors in both brackets. If there's a common factor, we factor it out and cancel. So if I look at this one, I can take 2 out of the first bracket, and that will give me x plus 1. I then have 2x plus 1, and I can't take a common factor out. I simply cancel off, and this is my factored expression. If you don't believe it works, multiply it back out. x times by 2x is 2x squared. x times by 1 is plus x. 1 multiplied by 2x is plus 2x, and 1 times 1 is 1. So we can see that will give us 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. OK, let's look at the next one. The first thing I'm going to do is rearrange this in the form now 3p squared plus 7p plus 2. So that gives us now a quadratic expression in the form ap squared plus bp plus c. So we've got p squared, p, no p. It's descending powers of p. So in each bracket, we're going to have 3p. So what I'm going to now do is multiply the a term by the c term. 3 times by 2. That gives me 6. I need now two numbers that multiply to give 6 and add to give 7. Just consider we've got 1 times by 6 or 2 times by 3. Clearly, it's going to be this one right here. So what I'm going to do is put the plus 6 and the plus 1. We know it's going to be positive. This number right here is positive and this is. If we have now a positive on the end, they're either both positive or both negative. If we have a negative, one is positive, one is negative. I now look for common factors. Common factor in the first bracket is 3. I take that out. P plus 2. No common factors in the second bracket. We just write it as 3 P plus 1 and cancel the 3. So if I was in an exam, I'd just tidy this up and write it as 3 P plus 1, P plus 2. And again, if we expand this out, we're going to have 3 P squared plus 6 P plus P plus 2, which gives us back now 3 P squared plus 7 P plus 2. Let's do another one. Um, let's go for this one, right? Uh, let's go for this one, i. So what we've got then is 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. So 4x in each bracket. We're going to multiply the 4 by the 3, which gives me 12. I need two numbers, but multiply to give 12 and add to give 8. That's going to be plus 6 and plus 2. So plus 6 and plus 2. I can see there's a common factor of 2, so I'll take that out. That'll give me 2x plus 3. I can see that there's a common factor in this one of 2, take it out, 2x plus 1, and take the 2 out, we cancel off. 
So all we have then is 2x plus 3 multiplied by 2x plus 1. And again, expand it out if you're not comfortable with that. If we look at this one, 4 times by 4 is 16. So we'd have now 4u in each bracket. And then all we would do is look for two numbers that multiply to give 16 and add to give 17. Well, that's going to be 1 and 16. So 4u plus 16, 4u plus 1. We can take 4 out of this one. So we'd have 4u plus 4 and then 4u plus 1. And we cancel this off and that is our factored expression. If we look at this one, we've got now 6p squared plus 5p minus 4. So 6p in each bracket. We're going to multiply the 6 by the minus 4. That gives me minus 24. I need two numbers but to add to give minus 24. Uh, sorry, multiply to give minus 24 and add to give 5. That looks like it's going to be plus 8 and minus 3. So plus 8 minus 3. So all I've done now, a times by c, I've looked at these, I've looked at that, and I've said to myself, well, 8 times by 3 is 24. There's a difference between them of 5, so that's where I'm going to get that from. If you're unsure, you could just go through 1 times 24, 2 times by 12, 3 times by 8, 4 times by 6, and then just look at those that are going to give us this value. If this is negative, 1 will be negative, 1 will be positive. So we can take 2 out of this one. That would leave me 3p plus 4. We could take 3 out of this one, which would leave me 2p minus 1, and we cancel off. So if we expand that out, 3p squared, then we've got, uh, sorry, 6p squared, then we're going to have minus 3p plus 8p, and then minus 4, and that works. So again, in the exam, if you're doing this, 3p plus 4, and then 2p minus 1. Don't leave those cancelled terms, um, just leave it in this particular form. Okay, let's have a look at another one. Let's go for uh, this one right here. So that looks a bit messy. So what we have then is 12 times by minus 15. Well, that's going to give me now minus 180. I want two numbers that multiply to give minus 180 and add to give 8. Well, if I do 10 times by 18, that's going to give me 180. So what we can do is put 12R and 12R. We want now to know which one is going to be positive, which will be negative, or the plus 18, and then we'll have minus 10. We can see that this number on the end is negative, therefore 1 must be negative. We can take 6 out of this one, so taking 6, that's going to leave me 2R plus 3. We can take 2 out of this one, which is going to leave me now 6R minus 5. And just taking those out, and we can cancel. So if we look at this, 12r squared minus 10r plus 18r minus 15. So this is 2r plus 3, 6r minus 5. And as stated, it's an alternative. Let's deal with this one right here because now we've got negative 6. And I'm going to think of a couple of different ways that we could do this. So here are a couple of different ways. The first thing I'm going to do though is write it as minus 6y squared minus y plus 2. So this is in the form ay squared plus by plus c. I'm going to put minus 6y in the front of each bracket. So this is your first option, minus 6y. We need to multiply the minus 6 by the 2, which will give us minus 12. Two numbers, but multiply to give minus 12 and add to give minus 1. Well, that's going to be minus 4 plus 3. I'm now going to take common factors out. I can take out minus 2 from this one which will leave me 3y plus 2. I can take out of this one now 3, and that's going to leave me 1 minus 2y. And I've just written that slightly differently. So all I've done now is taken 3 out of this one. We could write it as minus 2 plus, 2y plus 1. I prefer to write it like that. And all we do from here is cancel these off. So what we end up with is 3y plus 2, and then 2, uh, 1 minus 2y. And that now is fully factored. If you want to expand that out, you're going to get 3y, then you're going to get minus 6y squared, plus 2, and then you're going to get minus 4y. And that will give you exactly what we're looking for. An alternative would be to write this as minus the quantity 6y squared, plus y, minus 2. So this time I've taken now the expression and I've factored it out. So again, we're going to have two numbers that multiply to give minus 12, but this time add to give 1. So what we're going to have then is 6y in each bracket, leaving the minus out, and 6y. 
Two numbers that multiply to give minus 12 and add to give 1. Well, that's going to be plus 4, and then we're going to have now minus 3. So this time, I'm going to take out the common factor here of 2. So it'll leave me 3y plus 2. I'm going to take out the common factor here of 3. That leaves me 2y minus 1. So taking those out, I cancel the 3 and the 2, and I can write this as minus the quantity 3y plus 2 multiplied by 2y minus 1. So two different techniques to factor that. One taking the negative out to begin with, uh, or afterwards uh, in the second one, or one just to factor it like so. So factoring quadratic expressions when the coefficient of a term in x squared is not 1. Now, of course, we can use this technique to solve. So what we've been doing is looking at factorising quadratics. It says in this question, use factorisation to solve each equation, or using factorisation to solve each equation. Now, some of these are not uh, where the coefficient of a term in x squared is going to be uh, not equal to 1. So that's a nice one, to straightforward one. x minus 1, x minus 3. So x would be equal to 1, or x would be equal to 3. We could either add 25 to both sides and square root, or write this as a difference of squares. x plus 5, x minus 5. Let's go ahead and look at solving one where the coefficient of a term in x squared is not 1. So let's look at, let's go for this one right here. So we've got 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So I'm going to have 2x in each bracket. So we'll have 2x and then 2x. We'll set this equal to 0. I'm going to multiply the a by the c term. We need two numbers that multiply to give 2 and add to give minus 3. That will be minus 1 times by minus 2. If we add these, we get minus 3. So we can go ahead and put these in. Minus 2, and we're going to have minus 1. I can take out the factor, and that will give me 2. Then we'll have x minus 1, and then 2x minus 1. And that's equal to 0. Just cancelling off, we can see either x minus 1 is equal to 0, so x would be 1, or 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, so x would be equal to 1 half. So we've now used this to solve. Let's go for another one. Let's look at this one right here. The first thing I'm going to do is write now that this is going to be 4x squared minus 23x minus 6 is equal to 0. So if I'm not factoring and I'm simply solving, I'm going to make the coefficient of the term in x squared positive. So I've added 4x to both sides, subtracted 23x and subtracted 6. So in our brackets, we're going to have 4x and we're going to have 4x. We multiply the a by the c, so that's going to give me minus 24. I need two numbers that multiply to give minus 24 and add to give minus 23. Well, that's going to be plus 1 multiplied by minus 24. So in the bracket, I'll put my minus 24 and I'm going to put my plus 1. We know that it's going to be 1 negative and 1 positive, as now the c term is negative. I can take out a common factor of 4 here. That leaves me x minus 6. And then we've got 4x plus 1, and that will be equal to 0. So we can see from here, now x minus 6 is equal to 0, so x would be 6. Or 4x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x would be equal to minus 1 quarter. So there we go, some nice examples of solving now when we factored a quadratic expression when the coefficient of a term in x squared is not 1. With these ones, we would just expand them out. 3x squared plus 12x, uh, sorry, plus 12 is equal to 13x, rearrange, then refactor, and solve. Same with these. We'd expand it out, collect the terms, refactor, and solve.